Hey there, and welcome to section four, color correction. Now, in this section, we have one goal, and that's basically to make sure that our images have the right amount of color in them. And if we need to adjust some skin tone, we can do that as well. Now, a lot of the times when you're using lighting, you're in different skin tones and different cameras, things like that, um, skin's just not gonna look exactly true to color. And uh, so what we wanna do now is do any color correction and uh, basically figure that out. So. Let's start off with these images, because these images, in my opinion, are kind of like, they, they jump out at me. Um, they don't look like they have enough color in them. Like the skin looks almost like it's gray, for instance. Now in this image, the skin looks like it has almost too much color in it. Like it doesn't, it, it looks like, especially compared with the background. And these images looks like they, the skin could use a little bit of color in these as well. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Let's go ahead and start off with these two images. We'll double click there, hit develop, and now we're going to show you the difference between vibrance and saturation. Now, vibrance is going to adjust color, but it's going to do a pretty good job like protecting skin tone. So you can see if I bring my vibrance up to all the way up to 100, which is too high, obviously, but it doesn't look horrible, right? It, it could look worse. Now let's try bringing our saturation all the way up to 100 and see what that looks like. It's a lot. It does not look as good as it did with our vibrance. So, Basically, you don't want to go up to 100 with either of these. You definitely don't want to do it combined. But if you are going to adjust one thing for skin tone, I would recommend vibrance, not saturation. All right, because saturation tends to look a lot worse than vibrance. There we go. That's the reason. So let's go ahead and click and drag our vibrance. We're going to go from the left to the right. And basically, I just want to go as far as I possibly can while still having everything look like it's real skin tone. Okay, now sometimes it actually helps to zoom out here. So let's try like one quarter size. Yeah, let's go down to one eighth size. Okay, because I don't need to look at like all the details here in the eyes and all that stuff like that. All I'm looking is the general color of our skin. So it helps sometimes to be a little bit more zoomed out. All right, there we go. And that looks pretty good right there. So 76, 76 is what it is. Let's, you know what, let's make it even 75. We'll click there, hit 75, and hit enter. All right, let's go back to G for our grid view, and now we can see the difference between these. If you ever want to see the difference between two images, just click on the two of them, hit the C key for compare. Okay, so this is the difference between these two images. They were shot like one right after another one. This is the vibrance turned up. This is how it was earlier. Maybe this is a little bit too much color, but this still, you can see, it looks better. It looks like it has more life. Like it's more, um, well, it looks like it has more vibrance to be honest. Um, all right, let's try vibrance. Let's try 60. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and sync these. So I'm going to hit command and click on the two of those. We're going to go to sync settings and I'm going to make sure we're clicked on our color. There we go. And it's going to sync the color between those two images. All right. Now this image here, let's go ahead and hit D for the develop. We're going to change our vibrance, bring this up just a little bit. Again, what I'm looking for is like when our subject looks like he has a lot of like life in his skin. So like this, not a lot of life. That is way too much, obviously. So finding the area where he looks like, yeah, like alive and you know, like he's got a good amount of like blood flow and you know, his skin looks like nice and young and fresh and that looks pretty good there. So a lot of the time it's just clicking the slider and going to the left and to the right. All right, so let's click on, I tend to overdo things. So if I think like 40 looks good, let's try like 35. There we go. Cool. Now I'm gonna hold down command and click on these images. Let's click on check none, but I'm gonna turn color on. So it's gonna synchronize the color of those images to the color of this. All right. Very nice. So let's go ahead, start here. Now some of these images might not need it. Like this image, you know, bring the vibrance up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Just command click through those, sync there, and it will sync the vibrance here. All right, those actually look really good. Um, let's start here. This, we're gonna go ahead and bring the vibrance down just a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, let's hit G for our grid mode, command click there. So you can see I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over again. But these steps are really important when you're 
first working with an image in Lightroom because these are you know these are the images that are going to wind up getting sent to Photoshop and you just want to make sure that they look at the best they possibly can before they go into our final retouching program which is Photoshop all right here we go now when it comes to things like um, sharpening you'll see others like uh, for instance let's just scroll to tone curve detail things like sharpening and noise reduction and all that I generally some people do their sharpening here in Lightroom I really recommend saving sharpening for Photoshop I think Photoshop does a better job um, so this is the basically the things that I do in Lightroom make sure my um, light is done well with my um, with my white balance and that my color has the right amount of vibrance in it my skin anyway all right let's beautiful all right perfect so everything looks really good now now if there were if there was a time let's just, let's just go ahead and click on this one um, if there was a time when your skin color wasn't the right color let's say it was like a little magenta I'll just like make it, I'll just make it look like that for now um, I don't know why that would ever happen to you but if you did need to color correct skin you can do that in Lightroom too and that's done over here where you see HSL which stands for hue saturation luminance color and black and white so I would recommend clicking on HSL and then clicking on all right here and now you can see your hue saturation and your luminance so for instance if you have a color problem you'll want to click right here okay right next to hue click on the area you want to change and drag up or down until the hue is corrected okay if it's a saturation issue with a specific color you can click up and down and adjust the saturation of a specific color and if the luminance this is light and dark this will allow you to adjust the light and dark of a specific color all right let's go back to our original because we didn't need any of that one case where we would like to do a couple adjustments is here let's go to our develop key I'm just gonna bring the saturation of this green up it's not gonna affect anywhere else in the image so I'm gonna click here and just drag up there we go because that's the only green in the image right if I were to click on her reds it would do the rest of the image also so we're just gonna do the greens all right let's hit G for our grid view and I'm gonna command click on these where I can see our shirt as well sync settings and we want to click color on that's gonna make those a lot more green also all right guys yeah so that's basically it with color correction not doing a whole lot here in Lightroom this is basically getting it to the point where it's gonna look really good when I start working on it in Photoshop okay that's the end of the section we'll see you in our next section which we're gonna be exporting files out